Hey guys, my name is Logan, and today we're going to be talking about how I made this render. So I sketched out this little dude here with big hair right next to a pumpkin, but then the hair wasn't quite hidden, so I kind of changed that up a little bit, and I was like, oh, what if we do a little witch character, and she has this pumpkin. And then I thought it would be cool if maybe she's running from something, and then she sees this pumpkin, and she uses magic to turn the pumpkin into a little pumpkin vehicle, and then just drive off. Cool, let's make it. So now that I have my idea ready, I now pull open a brand new Blender 2D workspace where I can start making my animatic. My animatic is a beautiful place because it allows me to experiment very quickly on what's going to work and what's not going to work with my animation. Here's where I start placing a lot of the beats of the story, and I can really figure out the timing here. Blender makes it so easy to just sketch quick characters and then use their sculpting brushes to just push and pull things around and make quick little pose changes to just give your character a little bit of life. Because in the animatic phase, we don't care about visual fidelity. This is all about telling the story, doing it quick, and hitting some of those keyframes and key poses so you can really start to get an idea of what is the story you're telling. And after a little bit of drawing this animatic, here's what I came up with. So I started out making this character the same way I start out making any character, blocking them out with general shapes. Here I'm grabbing spheres, cylinders, and just positioning them in reference to the drawing that I did. As soon as all my shapes came together, I could merge everything together and start working on the face. I went ahead and carved two deep eye sockets to make sure I had plenty of room for my stylized eyeballs, followed by a little nose. I then just went through and refined some more of the facial features, puffing up the nose a bit, adding a bit of creases around the eyelids, and puffing up the cheeks a little bit. Once I had those eyes done, I wasted no time. I jumped right in and started making the clothes. The first thing I wanted to do was make the hat. Just like the body, I blocked the hat out with a couple of cylinders, and then just took it into sculpt mode and sculpted a little bit of detail into it. At this point, I moved on to making the hair. And I gotta be honest with you guys, it took me way too long to figure out just how great Blender's new hair system is. And this is the first project I tried it out on. It is so good. It is so good compared to the old hair system. One, I think it's way more performant. But two, the actual grooming process is so much smoother and you have way more control over individual strands. So I just went through and added like probably 20 to 30 different individual hairs that I want to act as a guide for the entire hair system. And then I can use Blender's hair assets, like this clumping right here, to actually craft the look of the hair. I then added a second hair system just for the one individual little strand of hair that comes across the face. I basically did all the exact same steps, except that it, it's only for one strand of hair. I like this a lot. I think this really adds to the character's design. I did some automatic retopology using quad remesher. I was able to then take that and use that as a base mesh to sculpt the dress out of. As you can see, I just extruded some of the faces down to actually make it look like a dress. Then I got to sculpting in some details. That includes some cloth wrinkles, a cavity for the wrist, and a cavity for the legs as well. I didn't want to over sculpt and go overboard with this. I just wanted this to feel like a simple little claymation dress. At this point, I took my little witch character over into Substance Painter, and I just made a quick material for the skin and for the clothes. I have a really cool clay shader that I like to use as a base for a lot of my claymation kind of work. Then I'll move into paint and specific maps. A lot of redness in the nose and the cheeks. That sort of thing to give the character a little bit of blush once i have that done then i'll move on to the clothing adding in just a basic cloth material and then just giving the outfit some color to make it feel like a spooky witch one of my favorite things to do with clothing is adding in the stitching just going around and adding in seams and stitches wherever feels right just to make this character's outfit come to life so now that every other part of my character is complete it's time to start rigging now I use Rigify for mostly everything, because I love the dynamic ability of Rigify to basically create whatever you want. For this character, I start off by grabbing a humanoid meta rig right from the Rigify library, and then just deleting the head section of the rig, because I'm going to create my own face bones when it comes time to moving the eyes around. But what's important is I want to keep these finger bones here. My character only has four fingers, so now that my meta rig is positioned properly, it's time to apply our scales and hit generate rig. 
And just like that, we have an animatable rig ready to go. All I'm going to do here is apply some automatic weights and get our character moving with the rig. Now that our character is fully complete, I think it's time we jump in and finally start recording some Rococo motion capture. The idea is that I'm giving myself a bit of a runway here to come do the scene because the little witch character, she lands on this pumpkin at the end. This is going to be my pumpkin. I need something to sit on. Okay, let me just move this even further up here a little bit. Let's get geared up in the Rococo suit and start doing some takes. Okay, so while I'm gearing up here, I think it's the perfect time to talk about today's sponsor, Rococo. So I've used motion capture before, but I've never had the means to actually make it for myself. I was always kind of at the mercy of whatever else is available online for free. But once I got my hands on the Smart Suit Pro and the Spark Gloves, I was actually able to start making motion capture for myself. And turns out, uh, not only is it super fun to do, but it's super easy to set up. Rococo has a playlist on YouTube, which is super easy to follow, and I was able to get up and running in like a matter of minutes. So if you're looking to add professional motion capture into your toolkit, check out the Rococo Indie Creator Bundle for 40% off. And also, you can get an extra 5% off if you use code RKK for it to use at checkout. All right, so I'm all suited up now here. Got the Rococo suit on, smart gloves. It's pretty cool. It fits super nice. I love it. I love how non-invasive this feels for being basically a bunch of sensors all over your body. So, put this camera up here. I'm going to do a couple takes and just kind of go from there. Uh, all right, I think we got some good takes. Let's uh, let's load it up and see what we got. I don't plan on using this motion capture data like at face value or anything. I, I want to take it kind of like a musician would take an old sample and just chop it up and mix it. Kind of kind of craft a performance out of the data. And let's go ahead and do a brand new version. Now the reason I'm going to a new blend file is because I like to. I don't want to mess up my rig, you know. So it's going to be important to up to link in our rig. So first thing we can do is I'll hit F3 and I'll go ahead and make a library override out of this. So now I can actually pose my character and let's just see what happens if we bring in our motion capture data and we'll import our take. So Rococo has the add on, of course, for Blender that you can use to retarget. But actually, I've had a little bit of trouble with this, specifically when retargeting characters that are stylized. Um, and what I found is the Auto Rig Pro add-on actually retargets it a little bit better. So it's real straightforward what we do. So first, um, just for out of pure waiting time here, I'm going to go ahead and hit play. There's a lot of downtime here we actually do not need. So yeah, frame one is going to be the T-Pose. So I just hit play here. Let's just see what's data that we actually don't need here. So this is me just goofing off. Okay, cool. I'm just going to delete all this. This is all data I just straight up do not need. So yeah, the first 250 frames, gone. Hit play. My character goes running up here. She looks around. Okay, she's being chased. Um, she sees the pumpkin. So here, here I'm kind of like, I'm kind of messing up in the take, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be chopping around this a bit. Pull out the old wand and then go ahead and give it the, give it the magic. <laughs> give it the magic. That's what we're trying to do, right? Okay. So, so now, yes, this is, we're going to want to replace this with custom stylized animation of her actually like jumping up and landing. Yeah. And this is the sort of like the takeoff as, as the pumpkin turns into the, the car. So one trick I found here is to try to line up the bottom of the spine. So the character I'm using here for this is super small compared to a normal character. As you can see, this is probably the size of a, of a regular human. So, okay, so here on frame one, I have this auto rig pro remap that allows me to just take a source armature. Okay, Mixamo rig reference. Nice. And then I can select the rig we want it to be on and put that as the target armature. So I'm just going to scale this down. Now, as you can see, now we're, now we're seeing where the proportions are different compared to a human. So I'm going to start here with the hips and I'm just going to set that hips to torso. So I'm just going to set one bone at first. Let's keep it going, right? We will set the head and um, I'm only going to do a few of them at a time. And the re and I like to do it this way so I can just kind of troubleshoot it as I go. Because I really want to know what bones are being affected. Left hand, not bad, not bad. All right, I put a couple of them in. Let's see how, let's see what we get. A little goofy. I'm curious if we switch the arms and hands to FK 
what, what we get. Okay, so I'm putting the left hand in, in FK and I'm putting the right hand in IK. Let's just see what we get with this. The arm looks a whole lot better in FK mode. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to go ahead and set the right arm now to FK as well. That's looking nice. So the fingers are cool because they're recorded with the smart gloves, but I, I'm having a little bit of a problem with some of these finger bones. And they are working, but it's, they're just a little bit wonky right now. I'm going to just skip the finger bones because those are going to actually just look better for me if I just do those by hand. So they're not going to need much. They're going to have basically two positions, open and close. I think this will work great for a base layer. I noticed that the hands just feel a little bit off maybe. Now that we have all the nice offsets using the FK mode, I'm going to go back into my Rigify panel and I'm going to use this button here, which will bake our actions back to IK mode. This will take a while, but we can do it here. And yeah, now uh, IK is driving this whole puppy, which makes it super easy for us to just grab the IK handle, reposition this, reposition this IK whenever I need it. Maybe we want to make this pose a little cooler, whatever, you know, we can just fix it. You know what I mean? Now this pose, maybe it's a bit stronger. So finally, after all of this, uh, we have all of our animation data sort of retargeted onto the animation rig now. And it still looks a little wonky, but that's okay. This is basically our cleaned up record, and we're gonna sample this for our song. So first thing that I'm gonna do, now that this is kind of baked out, nonlinear animation editor. And I'm just gonna push this uh, push down action. So now this is essentially like a video clip that I can edit now. Uh, let's just kind of find some cool moments here. So split strips, so I'm gonna hit Y. So Y, I'll split the strip there. So now we just have this one strip here. Let's get a new track. Let's just do that like twice. So I can move this up here. And now I have this track, which we have this extrapolation set to hold. If I just put this to nothing, now it will basically go wherever I want. I spent the next while just going through and slicing up this clip. I really wanted to make sure my fairy creature feels like a snappy little cartoon character rather than a human puppeting a character. I'm using the hotkey Y to make sure I split my strip properly and also making sure that I have my extrapolation set to nothing. So that way I'm not overlapping previous or future layers. Combining this technique with a little bit of blending allows me to easily recraft my animation to make it tell the story I want it to. Okay, so let's try something. Now Now let's try blending in uh, sort of like, a, like an animated poses take. So instead of replace, this is gonna be combine. So now, what I can do is I can kind of like an animator, I can go back and I can I can fix my poses here to what I actually want them to be and make them more appealing to the camera. So this is the first, I think, strong key for keyframe that I want to get right. So I'll just move this out. So I feel like at this point here, the character needs to have sort of like, like a wider stance. Characters like a little bit, oh, what's going on? What's going on? So let's go ahead and let's kind of do that here. So I set the pose. I'm keep. I'm going to keep going through, just keep doing a couple of different poses. Here. At this point, I found a really cool workflow or kind of groove that I got myself into where I'm just working through this entire motion capture collage, you could call it. And now that I got the timing right, basically giving it a stronger pose, a better silhouette, the same thing I would do in normal pose-to-pose -pose animation, except the difference here is that all of the rough animation is already laid out nicely by the motion capture. All I have to do is go in and kind of give it a final polish over and make all the poses feel more energetic, fun, and stylized. So to create the pumpkin car rig, I first started off by just creating a pumpkin with some basic spheres, rotating them around to get a general pumpkin shape. I knew that the pumpkin had to be able to morph and open up to expose the wheels and headlights, so I just used some simple shape keys and a little bit of sculpting to open up the sides of the pumpkin to allow space for those extra components to live. I then just duplicated the base shape of the pumpkin around four times, so I had the tires. I then quickly just used a couple of cylinders to act as vines that connect the main pumpkin to the little tire pumpkins. And then using the snake hook tool, I was able to make the vines look a little bit distorted and spooky. As for the actual rig of this car, I didn't do anything special. I just have a default bone setup, 
with a simple IK chain that leads to each pumpkin at the end. I figured this would be fine, seeing as it's just a wonky organic car pumpkin that was going to move in weird ways anyway, so, so hopefully this way it wouldn't feel too stiff. Once the car pumpkin was fully rigged up, it was time to animate. I just started grabbing all the controls and trying to condense the pumpkin inside of itself. I really wanted that transformation to feel visceral. I wanted you to be like, oh wow, the pumpkin exploded. Where did this car come from? It needed to feel sudden, but also have a whimsical Halloween, uh, you know, pumpkin kind of vibe to it, you know? Anyway, here's the final result of that little animation. I then just added some simple headlight materials and then took this guy in the substance painter to build out the actual pumpkin and vine textures. And then just appended in the pumpkin rig, as well as its action, right into the animation file that I've been working in. From there, it was just a matter of matching up the mocap from the witch and the pumpkin rig animation to make them come together and feel like one thing. After a little bit of fine-tuning the poses and the timing, I was able to just parrot my witch directly to the pumpkin rig, and just like that, she's driving a pumpkin, dude. So for both the eyelids and the mouth, I'll create different sculpts to represent different expressions and swap between them similar to claymation. And the same thing goes for the mouth. In this little short render, I only made three different versions of the mouth. I made a closed one, which are like some puckered lips. I have this ah uh, visine, which is, which is sort of like an evil kind of laughter. And I also have an ah uh, shape. I mean, come on, we're still talking about animation. The idea is this is the illusion of motion. So without going too in depth on the rest of the scene, I did a base lighting setup that's supposed to be kind of like a backlit nighttime moon vibe because I wanted the headlights from the pumpkin to carry most of the warm lighting in the scene. As for the actual environment, all of my nature assets are using a blender add-on called Botanique. I love using Botanique because it handles all my grass for me, all my trees. There's so many different things I can just grab and place into the scene. And anytime I know I need to do an outdoor scene, it's definitely the tool that I rely on. And the final thing that I did to top off this render is I replaced this little temp wand with an actual sculpted magic wand. Sculpted a bunch of little cavities and crevices in it and just gave it a little procedural glossy wood shader. And bam, magic wand. And so there you have it, my entire process for creating a stylized Halloween render using Blender 3D and Rococo Motion Capture. 